Hey guys, Laura and Jeremy Wells here. Hi. <laughs> you know it's about to be on when I bring the big guns with me, right? <laughs> he doesn't get on video very often. Um, we have something to talk to you guys about um, that all network marketers need to know, everybody in direct sales needs to know, um, and this is coming from experience, but it's also coming from just good old fashioned advice that you're welcome to share with your teams. Experience, not experience. <laughs> common, common sense, experienced, experience. Okay, so here's the deal. When you join your network marketing company and you start taking your product, um, it doesn't matter what this is, this is totally industry generic, um, company generic, but we just know, hey Colin, uh, we just know that when you start taking your product, when you first join, you're super excited, right? And when you're excited about something, I mean, honestly, sometimes it's like we have an out of body experience and we just want to shout it from the rooftops. We want to tell everybody and I sometimes refer to it as verbal vomit, okay? Um, and so here's the deal. When we, what, what were you doing? That's usually what I oh. do. I start talking about something and then I keep talking and then I keep talking yeah. and then I don't shut up. Don't. So, <laughs> so um, okay, so what we wanted to talk to you about is just some of the things that we've seen in the industry, and again, this is all across the board, um, but these are some of the things that we're seeing people doing um, in several different companies that honestly, it can kill your business it can kill your company and it can kill this entire industry this entire profession and when your when your association in your business is literally your entire household income that's a really big deal and so as part of the profession we all need to come together and like pinky swear <laughs> that we're not going to do this stuff anymore okay so i'll let you chat for a second about what this is all about and you guys are welcome to share this with your teams let us know if you decide to share it um, because it is something that you'll want to make sure your teams know about too yep so the idea is to you know every company out there um, in the direct sales world the network marketing world have you know rules that they need to follow whether it be um, where they can sell um, what, who they can sell to what their products are allowed to say and what they're not allowed to say um, I think the easiest example is we've all seen you know um, I saw one yesterday uh, in a sporting commercial. It was for um, a guy who, you know, got a little older and was in the gym, and he looked like he was just, you know, beat to death after his workout. You know, the big major league baseball player walks in and says, you know, he's a big muscle guy, um, and he says, you know, boy, you just look like you're you're not quite yourself, and uh, so he, he recommended he needed some testosterone pills, <laughs> and you know, the first thing that you see, the second he started talking about this at the bottom of the screen was these statements have not been approved by the FDA and there is no um, you know actual proven ability for them to sell this as a you know as a medication as any kind of medical um, help if you need those kind of things you should go see your doctor the disclaimer, um, that's a the disclaimer. <laughs> and so at the end of the day that's what we're kind of talking about here for our industry as well which is compliance um, you have compliance from state attorney's offices. You have compliance from the federal government. And the reason being is twofold. One, you don't want to be selling something and then be liable for what you said it was going to do. Uh, and two, ultimately, there are a lot of people who don't like the direct sales industry, and they're looking for every reason they can to take the company to court. And the way that they're going to do that is to use what the distributors of that product are out there saying. And so what we want to make sure we're doing uh, in your business for whatever your products are, I guarantee you somewhere in a back office, in a policies and procedures document, somewhere your company is going to have a compliance document. And if they don't, they should, um, <laughs> which outlines the things that you can say and can do and the things that you can't say and can't do. Now notice I didn't say shouldn't can't and there's a reason because shouldn't means it's kind of a no you shouldn't do this and you probably can't do this um, my favorite one that I've actually seen so far in the past week was a direct sales company that actually came out and said we as a company absolutely have no responsibility for what our distributors say or do and that was their disclosure statement <laughs> in other words you guys can go say whatever you want about the product you're selling the company's not reliable at all 
It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that because <laughs> somebody somewhere is going to take that to task. So we just want to make sure that we spend a few minutes covering these things because some people are new to the industry. Some people are new to their products. Some people are new to whatever company they happen to be selling for. And so these are just some ones, some specific ones that we're, you know, familiar with that we're using and then generic ones for the industry as a whole just to kind of keep in mind as you go down that road. So, I mean, this this was actually going to be a training just for our team and for our company, but then I was thinking, I mean, like we have this little guide, right? And I was thinking this is something everybody needs to know, right? It doesn't matter what company, it doesn't matter if you're a product, if you're a service, if you are a club, any kind of thing like that. If you're in the network marketing profession, you are under a microscope, okay? And so like Jeremy was saying, there are organizations, government organizations, we won't get into politics here, but it's all about the money. And different organizations have their hands in the pockets, they're holding hands with other government organizations, other political parties, where they're going to try and regulate things, okay? So it's really important. Let's take, for example, the health and wellness space. If it's a product, if it's a service, um, if it's a whatever, any kind of an affiliate program, here's the thing. Again, when you start taking your product, you might experience some things for you personally, okay, that blow the socks off you, <laughs> right? And it really excites you and you really want to tell everybody, oh my socks. gosh, this is... <laughs> Either. I don't have <laughs> Whatever. Oh my gosh, this has really helped me. It's helped ABC Health Challenge, right? So here's the deal. Um, and again, this is totally industry generic here, or um, company generic, but some of the things you can't say um, in our profession are obvious, right? You can't say that your cream that you rub on your body is going to cure whatever kind of disease or things like fibromyalgia, things like migraines, okay, cancer, it's going to prevent something from happening. You guys, that is dangerous territory if your company, if your materials, if your upline is teaching you the language to say that includes, hey, you need to tell them that our product or service is going to cure this, help this, fix this, alleviate this, or prevent this, that's, not good, okay? One of the things that I didn't realize in being in the health and wellness space um, is that the word pain, did y'all know that the word pain is medical diagnosis? Did you know that you're technically not supposed to say the word pain? <laughs> so when you call your husband a pain in the you know what, <laughs> you're matter. actually <laughs> having giving a medical diagnosis and you shouldn't be doing that. No, y'all can do that because <laughs> that's sometimes the truth right? Okay. What that means though, is that like, say you have one of those types of headaches. Okay. You can't say that your product cured that your product fixed that pain. Pain is a medical diagnosis. So here's the challenging part of this, this deal is that, um, sometimes your product really is flipping amazing. Okay. And what I personally like about the company that we're with, and there's several others who are like this too, um, is that you have got to be willing to let your company over deliver, let your product over deliver. You as the distributor need to under promise. So like one of the coolest parts about being in this type of profession is to promote something that you've fallen in love with, tell them your own personal experience in a compliant way, and then kind of sit back and let them have their own personal experience with the product. Because one of the most rewarding things about this profession is getting the text messages back from your customers who say, dude, you didn't tell me it was gonna do this. And you're like, mm-hmm, I know, <laughs> right? That is really, really cool. So, okay, so do you wanna go into like all of this kind of stuff? Like some of this is like applies to our actually. Our yeah, actual I mean, I think film. you hit so, some like, of the kind of ideas stuff. about, you know, giving, um, you know, diagnoses and uh, I don't know, diagnoses, diagnoses. See, I'm not a doctor diagnosis. either. Um, but I mean, you know, look, there are a lot of products out there that want to help with specific types of things. Um, but you want to stay away from, you know, saying that it can help you with specific medical problems that might be, you might have a diagnosis of diabetes and high blood pressure, high cholesterol. I have high cholesterol. I've had it for 20 years. If somebody told me buy this product and it will lower your cholesterol 
I would be very suspect, one, because I would want to then see if you can make that claim, mm. there would have to be something data. from the FDA and data to be able to prove that. Um, and, you know, it's an interesting industry, um, and in, not just direct sales as a whole, the pharmaceutical industry, all of those kind of things. The pharmaceutical industry knows the ins and outs of all of these terms and what they can say and what they can't say. They spend a humongous amount of money getting a product approved through the FDA just and lots of money just so they can turn around and say that it does x y or z when you dig into those studies you start to realize well in a certain percentage it can help this and the only reason this new drug has a new name approved by the fda is because it was an old drug that they want to keep the patents on and so they found another medical diagnosis that it may help and then they rebrand that same drug that was out 20 years ago under a new name and so it's all a game that you don't want to be involved in because there's a lot of money on the line for people who want to go after people who make claims that their product can cure, heal, fix. Um, and so, you know, look, I have, I, have, I have migraines. I've had them for, you know, going on mm -hmm. 20 years now. Um, I would I would highly suspect of anyone who can ever tell you, go look up the studies. Most doctors can't even tell you what cause migraines, mm -hmm. much less tell you that they can give you things to fix it. Sure, there are some things that can help with symptoms right. of those things. That's a big difference. But they don't cure an underlying problem right. or fix an underlying diagnosis. <laughs> and so that's where you want to be careful of the words that you use in the way that it can help people. So, so I mean, here's the thing. So like, like, the, like migraine, okay? So that is an actual diagnosis. A headache is not a migraine. There's a big difference. So what you can say is that your product um, helps the aches and discomfort created by the health challenges that you've had. Okay, I know that's long-winded, but that's the compliant way to yep. say it. And then that's under-promising. Let your product then over-deliver. If it's really gonna do all that, all that it says it's gonna do, your customer is going to come back and be like, whoa, this is legit and I have to tell the world. Okay, that's what happened to us. And that is what's going to happen if you do it in a legitimate way. Let's talk about the other piece of this, okay? So outside of the health and wellness space of, of making claims on what it's going to do for you physically, let's talk about the business side of things, okay? So this is another piece hmm. of yeah. this profession, yep. okay? There are um, a lot of people doing very well financially in this profession, okay? It's changed a lot of lives. Do most people come in and all of your team is winning all of your team is making x amount of dollars and no that's ridiculous you can't say that <laughs> you can't say that everyone who joins your team is going to get xyz the potential is there everyone can have the opportunity to do that but you can't say that everyone is doing that i mean income claims is a huge part of a company's compliance i'll tell you you know this has been almost 18 years, okay, in the process of me being on the, either the corporate side or the field side, I've helped, I've helped write things like this, okay, and one of the things that I've seen is that there are companies out there who have literally, they wake up, they go to work, the corporate team goes to work, and the doors are locked, the assets are frozen, there is no more business, paychecks don't trigger that week, why? Because one person decided to make income claims and say, you don't have to have a college education, you could go do this with me and we can get rich and you can drive a Lamborghini like my friend if you just come to this meeting. Y'all, you can't do that. There are companies out there that they're, they're training you to go to an ATM and withdraw your mortgage, yeah. your rent money, Watch so you can flash your $1,500 or whatever. Little do they know, 30 seconds after that video shuts off, you're going back into that bank to make a deposit, right? Because your rent, rent's gonna bounce. You can't make income my, claims. My favorite one I saw was a picture of, you know, two guys standing in front of their Lamborghini. And if you really look at the picture in the background, you could see the Hertz logo. So, you know, they it wasn't their Lamborghini, but it was, you know, it was somebody, the Lamborghini, you know, for all the sign. So, I mean, you have to be really careful too. What I would also say about that is you can't just use the income disclosure as an afterthought to the things that you're saying in the front. Um, you, know, you just, can't put a you, piece of paper behind you. Yep, income like, disclosure. I can you say know, whatever I want because this is behind me. Because that's me. behind me. It doesn't work 
<laughs> it doesn't work that way either. Um, and, and again, that's not one company. I've seen it from a five lot. or six, you know, multiple. And I've seen the distributors who then take that to a different level um, with the flashing of the cash. And nobody's teaching that other than what they see from someone above them. They didn't learn that from the company because typically the company's not going to push that. Now right. the company may ignore it and they may close their eyes to what's going on, but they're learning that from someone above them. So the point is, is make sure when you are bringing somebody new into the business, there's a lot of people who are new to direct sales. Just because you've got experience or you've been around it a long time, you have to make sure that the person who's coming on starts at ground zero. Um, they need to know everything, not just automatically you've joined. Now let's go see if we can get four people to join you. Let's learn a little bit about the business before you jump out there into the lake and realize, oh, I said something I shouldn't have said Oops. because I didn't take that eight you know, hours, four hours, two hours or whatever to read the documentation that the company provides for you so that you can have a better experience with the people that you're then bringing on. And it's not that the company is trying to make marketing your product difficult. It's yep. not that the company is trying to suffocate you and, and make it to where people won't think that there's an opportunity here. Honestly, I mean, when I look at companies, um, there's a lot of really great ones. Y'all know, y'all know. I love this profession. I love the products. Lord only knows. I've tried probably every product out there, okay? I love and support everybody in this industry. I just... I get really hung up sometimes and, and frustrated um, because there are people and there are companies who they're just saying things and they're doing things that honestly can mess it up for the rest of us. You know, for the for those of us um, and those companies out there who are doing it the right way, who um, you know are are understating what they have and they're letting the product do the work, right? Um, <clears throat> They're the ones doing it right, but it's like that saying, like one bad apple can spoil the bunch, right? I mean, that's really how it works. So if you're in this profession, just my, I love the phrase of under promise and over deliver, just understate, right? I mean, have private conversations with people, but let your business, let the opportunity, let the compensation plan, let the product do the selling. You do the promoting and just live by example because whatever you do, your team is gonna do in multiple, like multiply, <laughs> right? So um, anyway, so that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I think for me, I think the whole thing for me at the end of this would be just, if you haven't read the compliance documents that your company provides, go look at them. If there you have and you haven't looked at them in a while, Go back and look at them. If you can recite them word for word, then go back and look at them one more time. Because the more you're going to familiarize yourself with them, the more you're going to make sure that it's a conscious thing uh, and an unconscious thing so that when you start talking, you don't have to think about what you can and can't say. You have your experience. You know what you're allowed to do. And it makes you a better representation of the product when you know how to market it correctly according to the company guidelines for the company that you're in. I just have to say, I think it's funny that you're like marine, and I'm like butterflies, butterflies and unicorns, and unicorns. And yeah. <laughs> I want to put up no trespassing signs on my yard. <laughs> okay, that's all we wanted to share with you guys. We hope you're having a great Sunday and make it a great week. Feel free to share, comment below um, if this hits home for you. Share this with your team. No company is mentioned here, but I think it's something we all need to know. So let us know if you share it, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys.